Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here. Welcome to part two of this, uh, of my 2017 films ranking list. We will be doing 17 to 12 this time round. And so starting off with number 17 is, um, this film I do have on, I now have on Blu-ray, but I haven't rewatched it yet. Um, so my opinion may change on it, but first time viewing um, I gave it a nine, I believe I might have, and now I think I might have given, I might give it an eight. I'm not, I thought about changing it from nine to an eight uh, before doing this ranking, so I haven't rewatched the film yet. I might keep it the same ranking if I do. Depends on how I feel when I rewatch it, and that is Alien Covenant. <laughs> Yeah, I gave this one a nine when it when I first saw it when I uh, did the review. But off, but I think over time I just I thought maybe it should be an eight. Yeah, I think it should be eight. And so here we are, and I've got it as part of a of the sixth film Alien, uh, six Alien film Blu-ray set. So I've seen the first two as well, not in the Blu-ray set, but I recorded them from telly and watched them, and now I can watch them and the third and fourth ones and their alter their director slash special edition versions and Prometheus and rewatch Covenant. Um, I've also got Alien vs Predator, I can watch that and getting requiring, hopefully. <laughs> um, at some point and then I'll get the Predator films uh, after I've seen Predator 4, uh, Predator, yeah, The Predator when it comes out next, later in the year, I'll get the full film collection when it comes out. Hopefully I'll like it without knowing anything about the Predator films, uh, like I did here with without knowing anything about the Alien films. And uh, numbers one and two, uh, number one when I watched it, I noticed a kind of a link between here and uh, Alien with the big spaceship. Um, with number one, I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I was expecting to. But a rewatch, or the fact that it may have been an alternative cut, or the alternative cut itself may be a bit more enjoyable. Aliens, on the other hand, was really, really good. I think that might have been the original version as well, but again, it could have been the special edition. Um, well, we'll, well I'll, I'll see when I watch them. Um, Covenant, I would put in the middle. It would go ranking best to least favourite would be Aliens, Covenant, Alien. Uh, but, like I said, rewatches may change that. At this point, uh, Covenant still does get the lower ra ranking from, down to an 8, from a seb from a 9 to an 8, and that's why it's this low instead of a bit higher. Um, I think there was only one, there's only one more movie that on this list that would was originally an 8 before we get to the 9s. Um, but it's got some good moments. Uh, it's had some very scary moments and quite gory and works. And it's 15, so it's not terribly bad. That's good because I saw it before my 18th birthday. If it if it was an 18, I'd have to wait until afterwards. Mind you, I would like to see an 18 at the cinema at some point. Uh, yeah, and I'm not going to see Fifty Shades Freed. That's the exception. Any but that one. I've he I've not heard good things about the other two. I don't expect this one's going to be any better. Um. But yeah, I thought it was. This film was pretty well handled, for the most part. I know a lot of people may not think so, especially if they love the originals. Uh, well, origi I say originals, the first two. Uh, all the rest haven't seemed to be that great. Uh, but if they love the first two, then they may not enjoy this one. I think, I, well, I went in without knowing about the other ones, and after seeing the first two, I think only number two, out of the first two, I think number two is better, but one, probably not. I'm sure I'll get taken out and sliced for that, but a re before you do, can you let me rewatch them? Uh, give me a few months. <laughs> I've got a couple of other stuff to rewatch as well. Um, or watch in the first time during. So, but 
this one, you know, like I said, has some great scares and gore. It also ties in with Prometheus, so again, I'm going to have to check that one out. And uh, I'm trying to think. Um, Michael Fassbender was great as David and Walter, especially as David, the older model. And Catherine Waterstone was good as the main, as the other game character. If if Michael Fassbender's characters are the main characters, then of the human main characters, uh, Catherine Waterstone's character, Daniels, is the main one. <laughs> Uh, she also makes an appearance in Logan Lucky briefly, and I think she had her hair cut for this film, so she has that similar style in, in that. I'd say she had her hair cut for this one, because she has longer hair in Fantastic Beasts, although that may have been a wig, but I don't know. Uh, certainly here, she uh, she does a great job here. Um, that's... Uh, most of them do good jobs, but Waterstone in particular does a great job. Almost as good as Fastbender, but I think Fastbender's still the best thing in the movie. The aliens look pretty great and menacing, and the spores coming into people uh, people's eyes and ears that was pretty good. And that's ha that's another interesting way of how the alien can have itself spawned inside somebody. That's interesting. I don't know if that's been in a, another film, maybe in Prometheus, but for this film it was interesting and for a first time viewer it was pretty good. And the fight on the spaceship at the end was pretty good, but it was kind of an so Sarah. It was basically an excuse to kill off two of the four survivors, excluding David, or David as pretending to be Walter. So besides uh, David slash Walter, there were four survivors, and the alien being on the ship was an excuse to kill off two of them. <laughs> but Walter uh, turns out to be David's it's a twist, and so David killed Walter, I suppose, and he plants some alien embryos instead of human ones. And Daniels and the other person who survived are in cryogenic, and she's find out found out about it. Oops. And so, yeah, so the next film will probably have something to do with this. How it will turn out, it will connect with Alien, not quite certain just yet. That's spaceship landing. Uh, and the spawns and the aliens being grown from that, that makes sense. Uh, providing that they can have an excuse for those eggs being there. But... Mm, a few years to go, probably. So, not sure. So that was Covenant, and yeah, hope hope they are able to kind of how link in the this and Prometheus into Alien with uh, connect connect the two again, uh, the three again. So, moving on to number sixteen, a more superior animated third instalment from a. Uh, animated company. Uh, this one, I believe, would have been high. I think I actually kind of disappointed. This one is not higher. I kind of disappointed in myself not putting it higher. But when there's so many good movies in the year, this one, despite being really good, does have to be knocked down quite a bit. And so number sixteen is Despicable Me Three. more superior animated third film, uh, more superior than Cars 3. Um, I did enjoy it, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but uh, there's just so many better films in the year, that's why it's so low on the list. Um, this story is about a uh, super villain Groot, who's now become a secret agent uh, with his now wife. I uh, haven't seen the second film yet, so I haven't. I really wanted to. Number one, I think I saw afterwards, after I saw this, and I saw Minions back in 2015. That was re that was deservingly number 12th place, deservingly 12th place on that list. But 
Despicable Me 3, I think, would have been higher if there wasn't so many good, better films in the year. And it was a, it was a fun movie. And now he, so Gru and his wife are now secret agents. But after failing to stop ba, uh, Brad, uh, the new villain, uh, the new head of the organisation kind of fires them. So, and then Gru's brother contacts Gru and they meet up and, uh, secret twin brother I should say. Uh, they meet up and they decide to go on a mission mission together in order to stop Brad. Uh, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so, yeah, it's an enjoyable movie and has quite a lot of uh, laughs. It's funny. Brad's a great villain. He's <laughs> very funny and like how, loving how he's doing all his stuff at the start to Michael Jackson's bag. Uh, bad. That was in the trailer. And I was hoping it was going to be in the movie. And it was in the movie. Oh, thank you, uh, Illumination. Thank you, Illumination. For keeping it in the movie. Or well, not cutting it. Or whatever. And yeah, quite a few funny stuff. Lots of funny performances. Funny story. It's quite... It's really good. This is a better children's movie than the Cars 3 and Boss Baby. Uh, undoubtedly. And you know what? Adults are probably going to enjoy it too. Really enjoyable, really funny. I think a lot of heart went into this one as well. Number three, number one wasn't that special of a movie, but it was good. Had a bit of a kind of a game changer in the terms of how supervillains are presented. Two I haven't seen yet, but I think it's better than number one. Uh, this one is probably just another fun instalment. Uh, it's just something you can put on and enjoy. It's fun. You'll like it. <laughs> but... It is a bit short though, it's only an hour and a half. So it's only something to put on if you've got an hour and a half. Uh, exactly, to be honest. It's about, it's 90 minutes exactly, including the credits, so... Yeah. But if you've got an hour and a half to spare, this is a pretty good one to watch. Okay, number 15. A lot of people are probably going to slice me up for this, for putting me, putting it 15. But remember, this is my opinion. I should have said this at the, end, at the start of part one, but oh well. Uh, number 15 is Blade Runner 2049. A very good, it's a very good film. It just so happens to be 15 because there's more films on the list I like. Um, one of the biggest problems with this film is it is a bit too long and we could handle long films but compared to the other one which was not even two hours at least not in the well I've seen the sixth version of the seventh version film the seven versions of the first film but I've seen the sixth one the director's cut that's just under two hours this one is nearly an hour longer. Uh, let's say uh, the one I, the version of the first one I saw is about an hour and fifty odd min fifty to an hour and fifty five minutes. This one is two hours forty to two hours forty five. Yikes! I think it should have been cut down a bit. There's quite a few uh, walking around bits, um, like when bef the tension is right rising. Uh, when he's when uh, Kay is looking for Decker, a uh, Deckard, when he's got to his house, it actually takes him quite a while before Deckard is introduced into the film. Even in the scene where he's introduced, it takes literally minutes before they introduce him. They could have edited it down a little bit. Maybe you could have an extended edition released on TV and Blu-ray, just have a slightly shorter theatrical cut, make it two and a half hours, and then you've got an, a two and three quarter extended edition because this film is very long very long there's lots of wandering walking about <sighs> but the characters are great the story is interesting 
and it's visually stunning. I think it might even be visually better than the first one, and that was a pretty great, visually great film for the 80s. Um, but it, but the first one was very, had a very dark lighting. I'm glad this one adds a bit more colour and goes to some more destinations in the daytime. Um, yeah, it's got some interesting bits. I also like the fact that they've now gotten replicas as... Uh, they're a bit more accepted into society into society now, although not necessarily ex okay. Uh, replicas are allowed on Earth. They're allowed to do human jobs. Like K is allowed to do a police, be a police officer, a Blade Runner to be precise. But they're not completely accepted by the masses. Like like say, a Martian came to Earth. Martians came to Earth. They were allowed to do stuff. They were allowed to work and live on the planet, but not everybody, despite being us being trying to not be prejudiced to be, well, in the West at least, uh, trying not to be prejudiced to everyone. That's with some ex when some exceptional people, <coughs> Trump. <coughs> um, but say most of the most of the people in, on planet Earth, uh, trying not to be prejudiced to one another. There are exceptions, but. Then the Martians come down and we're like, while we, yeah, you can live here, if there's space. You can work, you can live, but we, that doesn't mean we have to be nice to you. It's something like that. So yeah, prejudice pretty much goes out the window in the future. I say out the window I, and then climbs back in. I should say, uh, prejudice prevention goes out the window because, my goodness, there is prejudice in this future, but at least they're letting replicants live on Earth. Oh boy. But, yeah, interesting film. Really good story, great acting. A lot of people love this film. I can see why, but personally I just don't quite get there. It's not just for the runtime. I think there is quite a... It does take its time, and the pacing isn't that great, even if it's... Yeah, even if it was a short amount of time, it's, the pacing is a bit slow. Um, the mystery is a bit confusing. It does start to make a little bit more sense a little bit later on, but it is a bit confusing in places. I do like how it does try to trick you into thinking K is the son of Deckard, but it's not. Uh, though it does reveal that the woman who he does visit... Uh, to examine his memories uh, it turns out to be the one it be Deckard's daughter but uh, I think if they built on that character a little bit more because it is just a bit out of, out of nowhere that it's that character uh, I think that she could have a bit more involvement maybe earlier on maybe helping out De uh, Kate investigate and then, ah, it's that character, the one who was helping him. Instead of, oh, it's that character, the one he went and visited. So I think that, so with, all, with, that ex, with that longer running time, they didn't really do much. Uh, they, it was pretty much a weaker twist. It was a good twist, but it wasn't a great one. It was good, it was, but I think they could have built on the, uh, had a bit more of the character appear, at least, just as a, as a friend or a helper, just early on, and then like, ah, oh. instead of, oh. I think some people would probably go, ah, oh, for that, for the one they did go with, but personally I think, oh, it's just that. It's it's that character instead of, ah, oh. it's, it's the one who's helping him. It's clever. So yeah, hopefully there'll be a fourth, a, not fourth, a third one, although maybe a fourth one as well third film out in the future, but it is, but considering it took 35 years to get to this one, yeah, but it is still a good film. It's, I would say it's slightly better than the first one, which I did rewatch uh, before I saw this one, and I enjoyed it on the second time viewing, so maybe I'll enjoy this one on the second time viewing when it comes out on, on DVD. So, yeah, that's Blade Runner 2049. Number 14, people are going to hate me for putting this one above Blade Runner. 2049, it's Justice League. Okay, bef 
before you try, before you sharpen your knives and load your guns, I enjoyed Justice League. I thought it was a good film. Uh, yeah, it was quite CGI festy, but I liked it. I thought the story was good. Okay, the character, the villain was underdeveloped. He was okay and played well, but underdeveloped. Yeah, I think more attention was on to the character, the main characters, the heroes. They were all pretty good. Uh, Cyborg could have had a bit more development. Maybe Aquaman as well. Flash had some good moments. They had some really good moments. She was pretty funny. Wonder Woman was great as ever. Batman was great. Uh, it's probably Ben Affleck's best performance so far uh, as Batman. It's rumoured that he's not going to be staying on much longer. Which is a shame because he's probably the best Batman since Michael Keaton. Uh, although Keaton is probably still the best Batman, but I don't think he'd be back. Um, Henry Cavill does his best performance as Superman as well at this point. I think uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Gal Gadot's best performance was in Wonder Woman the film, but this one's probably a close second best performance. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty good film. It's not everybody's taste, admittedly, but it'd be okay. It's still an enjoyable film. It's only two hours, so unlike the two hours, 50 minutes, the original Snyder Cut was said to be. Although people do want that film released, that released on the Blu-ray at least. And yeah, I'd like to see the Snyder Cut released on, um, alongside the original cut, uh, original there, not the original, the theatrical cuts. I'd like to see, like, if they did it for Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad, and I think the latter one, that was pretty much unnecessary. Uh, extended edition, just released them as deleted scenes. They weren't really that good. Apart from the fact that the Joe, the Harley uh, confronting the Joker and then he kills a lorry guy does make the uh, scene where he throws into the vat and she jumps into the vat a bit more. Uh, well, if that vat, if it had been included in the film, then the vat scene would have been a bit better, but as it was taken out, I don't really like the acid vat scene in the film, but it makes a bit more sense with the Harley confronting the Joker bit added in the extended edition. Um, but, yeah, I think the Snyder Cut should be released um, on on the Blu-ray with the, with the theatrical cut. But the theatrical cut's pretty good. And pretty enjoyable and has some good moments. Really good moments. It's not really much more to say. I like it. It's not perfect by any stretch. Imagination. But it is good and enjoyable. I did like it. With the second one, when they do Justice League 2, uh, I want them to start out like Avengers 2. To start out with all the heroes battling a villain, maybe coming to the rescue of someone, just turning up, working together, fighting someone or an army or something. And just has that great feeling of they're working as a team. After the events of the first one, they've teamed up again to fight off this villain, and they're going to do again later on. But we get to see them in action before we before we get to the big bad later, who could be Darkseid, because Steppenwolf here is working for Darkseid, and Darkseid was teased in Batman v Superman, so I'm sure we're going to get Darkseid later on if they're sticking with this extended universe. In the end, this is just a, this is an enjoyable film, and I yeah I liked it, and the pacing was pretty good, considering it was it's the shorter version, the pacing is pretty good. Um, but I think it might have been just as good maybe, it, with the longer one probably not as good but good enough. Okay, number thirteen. Enough. I know a lot of people love this film, but. Well, I did as well, but there is 12 other better films uh, from the year that were better, but yeah, I think, but all the Oscars it was nominated for, most of them I think would have been, it was worthy of, and I don't even know how many it won, to be honest, one or two maybe. And this film is, of course, it was nominated for about seven, eight, nine, maybe ten. This film is, of course, La La Land. A rush, a glance, a touch, a dance, a look in somebody's eyes To light up the skies, to open the world and send it really A voice that says I'll be here and you'll 
will be alright. Now this film is about uh, two people who want to achieve their dreams. They fall in love for a bit. Um, and they try to achieve their dreams of being a uh, jazz uh, player and an actress uh, in the world of Hollywood uh, in Los Angeles. And it's a pretty good film. It has some great um, character moments with the two main characters. The dance and music sequences are great and well choreographed and performed. And it looks pretty cool in this Visuals are pretty stunning. There isn't a really much CG, I wouldn't say. It just looks pretty good. It looks really cool. Um, story is good, and yeah, it's quite enjoyable. And it's a nice homage to those older 50s, 60s uh, films, at least certainly at the start. And you kind of have the bits where you, if you had an interval in the middle, they have kind of a half, end of half one, end of start of half two. So kind of a halfway point. If, the cinema wanted to have an intermission for about 10 minutes. Thankfully it didn't and we were able to continue, although on DVD and Blu-ray that'd be a good place to pause. And you wanted to go to the loo or grab something to eat or drink. But in the cinema it just carried on. But that would have been a point to uh, pause it if you were halfway. Also if it was going on television and it was not on the BBC then that's another place to uh, have an advert break. So, that's a good point. Um, there wasn't really anything bad about this film, to be honest. I don't think there's anything I don't really like. It's just, uh, it's not completely great. Oh, I got it. I remember. Oh, okay. There is something that's not really great. At the end of the film, uh, the two kind of, they, uh, ended their relationship and they go their separate ways, but they're still fulfilling their dreams. Uh, Emma Stone's character has now married and had a child and he's being looked after. I think it's a boy she had. And she and her husband try and go out, but they the place they go is closed or something. But then they find the jazz bar, which Ryan Gosling's character is playing. And they sit down and they're listening. And then it cuts to an alternative version of the story, uh, went back to the bar where they first met. And instead of him just nudging her, nudging past her and then they'd have to meet up later on and develop the love in the relationship. He just snogs her. And then we just go on to a crazy, well choreographed and well look and brilliantly visual, but in, but plot wise it makes no sense montage of them on a romantic uh, trudge through life, just going through between set and set, uh, like on a film studio, and through costumes and uh, backgrounds and, like I said, sets. Um, but it doesn't really make much sense, apart from the fact it's an alternative uh, depiction of the story. But it's going way too fast. It's about it's about five minutes, I think, maybe just under. So really, it's basically the film shortened and then made into a montage, and stuff's changed. Is a bit is happening differently, and it's not really making much sense, to be honest. And then it cuts back to when they're listening to the piano playing and I think then it just ends not too long afterwards so I don't know what was going on I think you could have removed that bit it maybe it, it it looked so good but maybe that's why it kept they kept it in because it was so good uh, vis on a visual style however on a plot style it made no sense it made no sense to have that uh, alternative uh, dream sequence in it made no sense to the plot didn't make any difference it just looked good but that's it but the rest of the film is really good has some really great moments and I, I heard some people say Emma Stone isn't that great at singing but I thought she was all right and um, Ryan Gosling certainly is pretty great at singing the opening number is brilliant literally first well, first scene of the film People start singing and dancing on an L on an LA highway. Traffic's are so bad that they actually have to. That if they are stopped, then they actually decide to get out and dance and sing. That is how bad traffic in LA is. People actually just uh, get out and sing and dance if they can't actually go anywhere. That is actually funny. 
Uh, imagine if that happened on the M25. That would, pro that would be a newsflash. <laughs> yes, that would be funny. So, yeah. No, 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 it's a good film, but there's some bits that aren't so great, and good visuals aren't enough to make it a perfect movie. But like I said, I like the story and the characters, and it looks good. <laughs> I just said that's not the only reason why it shouldn't be. Perfect film. Overall, pretty good. And like with Conjuring 2, it was a surprise, it was actually surprising on how good it was. So, yeah. And there will be another certain film on this list that surprised me on how good it was that had similarities to Conjuring 2 in its genre. But before we get there, we have quite a few others, to be honest. Stuff. And next up, we have the last one of this this half, this half, this part, number 12. Number 12 is Dunkirk. on Blu-ray not too long ago, um, but I haven't rewatched it yet. <laughs> um, what ones did I? I have got uh, on DVD and I've uh, got Moana on DVD, we got uh, Logan on Blu-ray, we got got Covenant now on Blu-ray, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and Wonder Woman on Blu-ray, Spider-Man Homecoming, excuse me. Oh. Uh, what was that? Spider-Man Homecoming, now Dunkirk. I think that's about it for now. So, uh, there'll be more in the future, hopefully. Um, with this one, again, I have to rewatch it, but um, it is quite a great film. You've got the three stories of the, the boat, the beach, and the air. Um, I, I really especially like the boat story. Uh, the stuff on the beach is really tense, and especially when the Germans are bombing it. Typical Nazis. But it is still uh, still an enjoyable film. Uh, enjoyable. It's very tense. It's got some great stuff. Hans Zimmer's uh, score is great. There's as well as the actual conflict of World War Two. There's also personal conflicts um, between some characters. I think maybe. There is this one guy they rescue from a wrecked ship, the hot seat, and, and they have to take him back. And he wants to go back home because he's shell shocked. But they have to go to Dunkirk to get everybody else. And there is a little conflict between him and the guys on the ship. Um, there's also some conflict a little bit later on between some of the soldiers when they discover one of them is a French uh, soldier. I don't even know if he gets out or not. That French one. Uh, he might have died, but some of the British are like, he's a frog, which is enough for, for French. And there's some conflicts there and a little bit of fighting. Eventually they want him to stick his head out to see if the Germans are shooting at them. Oh, Nazis, you keep doing it, don't you? But in the end, this is a pretty great film, has some really good moments, and... It's really well shot. Oh my goodness, it looks brilliant. Some of, these, some of these movies are some of the best movies ever shot. I was talking about how great Blade uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast looked. Blade Runner 2049 looks really brilliant as well. And La La Land just now, I was just talking about how beautiful it looked. And this one, oh my goodness, stunning. 
And there's a few more later on, I think, maybe. Or is this the most stunning? Uh, we've got some more later on. Um, but, yeah, still a really, really visually stunning movie. It's so good. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to rewatching this, actually. And so, yeah, that's Dunkirk. Part 3, we'll be looking at numbers 11 to 6, and that's the end of part 2. I'll see you guys next time. German bastards, and yeah, yeah, they want British to surrender or escape. Yeah, they, if the Germans want them to go back to Britain, why are you trying to kill them? Honestly, Germans, well, Nazis, I should say, not necessarily Germans, because that could I mean the actual country as opposed to the P, the Nazis. Oh, blah blah blah. Forget about that.